usually the drugs were part of part of kind of a spiritual search actually so it wasn't so much drugs on some level to to either numb pain or escape but it was drugs like to enhance an experience like LSD and mushrooms and things that I took to a uh, ayahuasca ceremony in the Amazon I did with a shaman and um, I was a Buddhist for a few years and, and got heavily into uh, meditation and Tibetan Buddhism. Um, I tried yoga and Hindu chanting and uh, fasting. Um, Came vegan. Oh, ve organic. I fruititarian. I lived off fruit for a while in wow. Costa Rica. Uh, but, so. Let's see. What have we left out? Anything? <laughs> uh, I never tried, um, you know, born again Christianity. <laughs> it was one of the only things I didn't try. It just didn't fit in the kind of, you know, hippies don't. They don't tend to bring that up. What drove you? I think it's looking for, for meaning, looking for a life that, that isn't just the rote nine to five, kind of turn myself off and turn on the TV life. You know, I was looking for something that, that had meaning and, and where my, I felt that my spirit was alive, that I felt that I, I could make sense of this, this strange life. <laughs> that we're in. You, you say you just had never even heard the message. The weirdest thing, the cross, you know, that, that it just meant nothing to me. It, you know, all these other symbols that I'd seen, you know, the Star of David had association with Rastafarians or, or the Om symbol for, for um, you know, yoga practitioners. All these, these symbols had meaning to me, but the cross never even, never even came into my awareness. It, it was a really weird thing. And then as soon as as soon as it did and it made sense, I saw it everywhere. You know, I saw it in windows and I, and I, I saw the cross, you know, in telephone poles. And all of a sudden the, the world became laden with this, 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 uh, this symbol that meant so much to me, you know, that meant, that meant forgiveness and life and, you know. Well, we have to get you to that very quickly because after all this world travels and experimenting and searching in everything imaginable. You were homeless for a long time all over North America. And you winded up at your aunt's door. So I was living on a bus with 14 people, a hippie bus. The bus continued on back to BC. And I stayed because my birthday was in a week and I wanted to celebrate with my family and especially my aunt because many times we celebrated our birthdays together because they were next to each other. She had become a Christian about seven years before. And so I stayed and the night of my birthday, she skipped an alpha meeting where they were talking about the new alpha course. Um, she skipped the meeting to come to, you know, her druggy nephew's birthday. And I, that night I went home with her and that night I, um, for some reason, we, we stayed up till three in the morning talking about God and then the next day I went to a birthday party and the day after that I went to an alpha course and still nothing but, but we, every night we'd stay up and she had to get up for work at, you know, seven and we'd stay up till three in the morning talking about Jesus and I, and I was struggling with these the exclusivity, that was a big thing I was struggling with. How could you say that Jesus is the only way and all these other people are wrong? That was a big struggle for me. Um, so we talked about that quite a bit. And that Sunday, um, I went to a worship service with her and I felt God say to me, welcome home. And wow. yeah, which was a, which you, was a you, huge you thing. You just heard, you had that Yeah, impression. I just what? heard him inside my heart say, welcome home, which one of the things I went to all over the world were these rainbow gatherings, hippie gatherings, and the sign they always had above the gatherings was welcome home. Mm -hmm. And so God spoke a language in my heart that he knew I'd hear. And, and I, there's no doubt it was his voice. You say he freed me from deep loneliness and mm. pain. Mm. Yeah, I diff at different times I struggled with an intense sense of um, despair inside my soul, like hunger. And, and, oh, in so many ways, you know, God has met that hunger and provided me with, with meaning in my life. Now, years before your wanderings would end, a lovely girl named Sarah got a prayer request for a guy named Matt, who was in the Amazon or something, yeah. from your aunt. Yes. And she didn't even know who you were. She'd never seen no. you, I don't think. No, no, she, four years before I had met Sarah, I was in the Amazon and I had gone on an extended fast and I was down to about 80 pounds and struggling with all sorts of uh, mental, emotional stuff. You were a mess. <laughs> I was a mess. I ended up in the hospital and um, almost dead. And uh, 
she prayed for me. She was at Trinity Western in the time in BC, and her parents were attending the same church as my aunt. And uh, she had prayed for me. And then four years later, when I showed up at that church, her parents called her. She was in BC and said, you wouldn't believe the people showing up at our church. Because <laughs> I had, you know, I had, I looked quite wild. <laughs> so. the, the Bohemian wild child yeah, yeah. was now in the sanctuary. Yes. <laughs> and how many years ago did Sarah become your wife? Seven years ago. Okay, you've got to see the most beautiful part of this story. Here's the fruit of that wonderful relationship. Anna is five, Lucy is three, and here is Sarah, who prayed for a guy named Matt, whom she had never seen. You enjoying being a dad? Oh, it's, a it's a love I've I'd never felt before. And uh, even just coming up here and just a day away hurts my heart because I just love those girls so much and my wife so much. So God has given me a new story, a whole new story. Mm -hmm. Amazing. He traveled the whole world and didn't find it. But right in your own backyard, in a mm -hmm. sense, Jesus was waiting to welcome you home. If you are in that general lostness, uh, alone in the universe, you know what? You're not alone. <laughs> There's someone who made you for his pleasure, made you for himself. And I am praying that this will be your story as it is Matt's.